Welcome back to the Poultry Doc Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Blaine Mosesheck. Today we're on a special visit to London's Farm, where a nine-year-old entrepreneur is raising poultry, turning a profit, and giving back to the community. On this episode, we meet Shadow, London's rooster who's battling a tough case of bumblefoot. We'll walk through what bumblefoot is, how it affects chickens, and the steps you can take at home to keep your flock healthy. Welcome to the Poultry Doc Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Blaine Mosesheck, and today we are in Waco, Texas, filming the 11th episode, and we're here at London's farm, um, here with London and his mother, Sarah. London approached me through one of the Central Texas uh, Backyard Chicken Forums about, had some things going on and some questions, and would like to come out and me to help him out. And also, it's a great opportunity. You tell us about your story and your farm and what's going on here. Uh, it first started whenever I was in Georgia, and I seen some nice, pretty birds and some chickens and ducks down there. And I was like, Mom, I want that. And ever since then, I've just been in love, and I've had all this. We've had chickens all over the place. You want to say hi? So you started with a few chickens, and now you've got ducks and geese and turkeys. What else, what else do you have back there? What else? Geese, call ducks. And that's all I can really think of right now. Tell me about um, some of the issues that you may have had or what you think you're having going on with your birds. We have maybe three right now um, with Bumblefoot. Let's go back to the coop and check out uh, some of uh, London's birds and see what's going on. Okay, so London, uh, this is your game rooster. Yes. Uh, the only one you have. And it's got a Bumblefoot issue. When did you notice um, that he had Bumblefoot? When we first noticed, it was maybe a couple of months ago, and we haven't had time to really fix it up. So he's just been walking around, laying down with all the other ones. And it was on the bottom originally, but now it has oh, formed to the front. So this would be a, an odd presentation for Bumblefoot, but you said it had started, you had more of the severe lesion was in the bottom, right? So you had a swelling on the bottom. Did that come out naturally, or did it just shift up to the top? Um, come out naturally and then it formed again. Formed again on the top of the foot. Bumble foot, those infections are deep and they're inside the um, kind of connective tissues, the tendons and whatnot. And when you have a pocket like that in there of like pus in this case, what we call exudate, that tends to be walled off and protected from the, the bacteria protected in there. And so we give antibiotics and the antibiotics can't penetrate into there. And so we can give antibiotics and it'll get kind of better a little bit, but it never really goes away unless you can get in here and clean this out, um, which would likely, you may have some bone. You said he's, is he um, limping pretty good? Or no, he, he walks good? around just fine. He walks around, okay. Walks. And it's probably not in the bone yet. Okay. Now that initial one where you talked about, um, where it started on his foot, if you can catch it early, a lot of times you'll see that kind of center point of it, like the thinnest portion of the skin where it would likely come out. Um, one thing you can do is take like, you know, a pool noodle. If you cut like a half inch sliver of that, make like a, a shoe, like a, basically like you would shoe a horse. But in this case, you're gonna create it and that little center part will be right, um, right in there. So he's not bearing weight on the center of his foot. And then you can take that salve, that prid stuff that you talked about okay. and pack it in the center of that pool noodle and then just wrap it with vet wrap. That way it kind of keeps the pressure off and it kind of, the weight of the bird on that top of the lesion kind of forces it out okay. but gives it pressure way to get out of there now with it being on the top like that yeah but on the top <laughs> like that this one is an odd one I'll kind of getting out of the side here so it hurts him yeah it's bothering him but uh, yeah. okay we could um we'll, we'll try to squeeze it out we so have a couple of gloves <laughs> oh do you yeah go grab some gloves well uh, do you need a large yeah large or extra large whatever you got all right <laughs> So we just looked at London's rooster with the bumblefoot. And so what we're gonna try to do is get as much of that material out of that wound as possible. And we were able to express a little bit earlier so I know there's an outlet for it. And so that's what we're about to do next. But what we're gonna do before we start that is mix up some chlorhexidine solution. London, you know what chlorhexidine is or what it's for? Uh, not really, but all I know of it is that it helps chickens through like sicknesses and yeah, Bumblefoot. what we want to do is clean up. So it's basically like it's a safe soap for cleaning wounds, basically. So like if you had a cut, um, it doesn't hurt to get this in there and does a good job of doesn't sterilize the skin, but it, it, it's, a, it's an antiseptic cleaner. Almost right? like a peroxide. 
Kind of like a peroxide. Peroxide is actually not great to use because it damages the skin, healthy tissue too. Mother! Sorry. <laughs> I, hey, I grew up with my mom putting peroxide on everything right. too, but they tell us today that peroxide is actually kind of, it damages the skin, so okay. not to use it. Good to know. Okay, so we're on the tailgate of my pickup and we're about to check out the rooster that we just looked at. And what we're gonna do is express some of that material that, we, that was in that wound and hope to get out as much as possible. And then that'll allow us to give him some antibiotics to hopefully get over with the last a little bit that, that infection that he has in there and hopefully that clears it up. But what we're gonna do after or before we start too is clean the lesion really good. And this is something for basic wound care. Today we're doing it for bumblefoot, ear hen or rooster could have gotten attacked by a dog or scratched on the fence or something like that. Chlorhexidine, is, which is what we're gonna be using, is a good cleaner to disinfect skin that's open and it's safe for tissues. So, what we're going to do, we've got about, we're gonna call this a pint of water, and I measured about a teaspoon, um, a teaspoon or two of chlorhexidine into that pint of water, and we're just gonna to top it off with, in this case, bottled water, because this is what I've got on the back of the truck. And that we're, and this is what we're going to use to, um, to scrub and disinfect that site before we, before we get to it. So, easy as that. Let's make like some soap. <laughs> okay, we're gonna try to make it better. So, okay, London, what we're doing is we had our, we made our little disinfectant solution, and we're gonna clean this up. I mean, this is a foot, right? So yes. it's gonna be dirty, and he's gonna get back into it again. Sorry, I'm getting, getting you wet here, but scrub that really well. Um, and it doesn't really make suds because it doesn't have um, surfactant in it, okay. so that's normal. But just the, the liquid itself, and if we're gonna wrap it, we want to like clean all these toes really well get all the dirt because we're gonna wrap it is this something we can get on our own or it has to be prescribed nope this is uh you can order that on amazon or wherever okay. that's um just a normal veterinary kind of cleaner skin okay. cleaner oh, that's a nice foot so yeah what we, we when we were cleaning it you can see that we kind of knocked away the that kernel that was on there and in this case most of the time you would find that on the bottom of the foot um this has been going on a little while and it's kind of migrated to the top and so we've got uh it kind of came out of the side in this case. It's also coming out of the front and that's where we're going to focus on uh, expressing it out. We may get something out of here because it's bleeding a little bit, but um, I think we're gonna get most of it out of here. So we're squeezing earlier. It's coming out by my finger. So you can see right here, it's kind of a, a squishy spot and that's kind of, that's where the thin is skinner too, but we're actually getting it out from between those two scales there. So we're gonna squeeze and try to get as much of that material out of there as possible. Nasty. Why does that look like mayo? <laughs> well, it's well, not mayonnaise, not I will tell you that. Um, yeah, it just, that, what that is, is dead cells and basically that's the immune system comes in there and tries to fight this bug off. And those cells die as it does that. And they just get left behind. And so that's basically what pus is, just dead cells. We want to really get as much of that debris out of there as possible. And you'll notice that as I do it, we're going to keep cleaning because, yeah, that stuff that we're taking out is essentially got bacteria in it. And so every time we don't want to try to flush out as much of that as possible. You see, I'm actually getting that chlorhexidine in there, which is that's not a bad thing either. And you can see he's calm. This is actually, I'm sure he's. You know, taking the pressure off of there and it's um, feeling better. To have it bleed is kind of a good thing. Okay. Um, that means you got, you know, blood flow into it because what happens is it gets walled off. And that's another reason why the, um, fact, the antibiotics sometimes aren't very effective is because there's just no circulation there. So if it's bleeding, that's a positive. Okay. Trying to get this last little. Is that a scale or is that still inside? No, it's still, um, yeah. It's dried a, up like that. Yeah, that cellular debris we were talking about. So we'd call that like a cellular exudate. And, you know, you may not be able to get all of it. And the body will can clean it up. I mean, you can see there's some in there and it's pretty dried and hard to get out. And I don't want to squeeze them any more than I have to. Do this one, one more time, see what we can get out. And you can see it's open just a little bit there. See that's coming out. And again, oops, sorry. 
So now we're going to clean it up. So we've expressed as much out as we can. We're going to clean it up again. And this is where um, we'll wrap them right now, but you can come back. Um, I don't think we need the, the salve anymore because we really tried to pull okay. it all out. But what we're going to do, <clears throat> we don't have it right now, but we're going to get a pool noodle for London. Or London's going to go pick a pool noodle up like Walmart or anywhere else. You know, so the tubular floats and cut about a half inch slice of that tube. And then we're going to set it right here so that the inside, the, the palm of his foot, the sole of his foot is, is kind of in the middle of that, that pool noodle, right? Now, if you had an active infection and we hadn't expressed it out yet and you see that little black spot on the bottom where it kind of wants to come out that's where you could pack it with uh, like a drawing salve that'll help okay. soften that and then again that downward pressure on the foot with nothing underneath it is going to help drive that infection out okay. okay so we'll put the pool noodle down if it were needing it we would put the draw salve in there and then now we're going to wrap it with um, uh, some vet wrap Okay, so London, what we're gonna do is take some of the bandage, some of the gauze material. We put a little bit of chlorhexidine solution on it um, and we're gonna wrap it over the top because this, this is you know, where the lesion's at. Usually, in, in most cases, that lesion will be on the bottom, but this is a, a little unique. So you see I'm kind of weaving it between his toes. Yes. And you can kind of turn over. And I don't wanna do it too tight either because I still want you know, good circulation there. And so he can have good ways of walking yeah. if we still have it on. We don't want to impede his walking too much. So, London, what we did is we cleaned it really well, expressed as much of the stuff out as we could, cleaned it again, put some gauze on it, um, and that gauze had Chlorhex, our antiseptic cleaner on it. Mm -hmm. And then we wrapped it with vet wrap. And uh, we don't want to get it too tight because we want to make sure the circulation is good there. Shadow should be good to go. We got a, quite a bit of material out there. We're going to put him on an antibiotic to help kind of clean up whatever's left. And hopefully he'll be on the mends. One thing to keep in mind too, we want to try to keep this dry as possible. We got some rain here today, earlier, so yeah. that things are kind of wet. So London's going to put him in a carrier probably or something to keep him dry for a little while until things dry up. Sound good? Yeah. Today we've been out at London's farm in Waco, Texas, looking at his menagerie of birds. Our big issue was Bumblefoot and his rooster. Glad that you uh, invited us out, and where can people find you? Where, if they wanted to buy some eggs, where would they find you at? They would find me on here or on Facebook. Facebook where? On my farm page. London's Farm, and it's L-O-N-D-Y-N, London's Farm. Yeah, Miss Sarah's wearing a shirt, we both are. <laughs> I really appreciate you inviting us out, and I really enjoyed looking at the farm. You and your mom, Sarah, have done a great job proud of you keep it up i like small business entrepreneur guy um we talked about where they could find your products everybody follow london on facebook and look him up online i appreciate everybody joining click that like button tell your friends share the story and uh thanks for joining us uh -uh, don't you even think about it girl girl has already pooped on my arm ah! you're good bro you're good you're good we don't need to fight today <laughs>